Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set 28. There are links to the problems. <laughs> I have such a block about that. There are links to the problems and a playlist of all the problem sets uh, in the description below. All right, here goes. Let's do the problems, I'm better at that. Um, we wanna evaluate each of these limits. I got a little scared when I saw all these limits. Uh, like I wrote the problems a long time ago and then I started doing them. Uh, I was like, ah, are these gonna be really hard? I think we can do most of these by substitution, so really not that bad, right? That should always be your first try. Um, so for the first one, if I just plug in negative three or substitute negative three, I get uh, nine plus four is 13 over uh, negative three minus five is negative eight, negative 13 eighths, that's it. All right, let's take a look at B. Uh, again, we're just gonna try to sub in. Uh, I was expecting to get zero over zero. Uh, I don't know if we know L'Hopital's rule yet, but if we, if we do, you would probably be expecting that, um, but we don't get it here, right? We get um, e to the zero, which is one. We get the cosine of pi over three, which is one half, so minus one half, over uh, the tangent of pi over four is one, and square it, you get one. The tangent of pi over three is radical three, and square it, you get three. So we get uh, one half over four, or one eighth. Uh, and that's it, nice. All right, for the next one, the limit is x approaches pi of sine of x over two uh, all over x plus pi. So if we plug in pi over two or substitute pi over two, we get the sine of pi over two, which is just one, over pi, over, pi plus pi is two pi, and, and you're done. Uh, natural log limits, I think for the most, well, you're, the interesting limit is going to be as you approach zero from the right, and that's what this question is. The other potentially interesting limit is you go to infinity. Um, I like to answer those both with a graph, although I think we all know the limit as you go to infinity is gonna be infinity. Um, the graph makes it very clear that as you approach zero from the right, uh, you are just approaching negative infinity. And that's the whole problem. All right, let's look at the next one. Table problem. Use the table above to answer the problems that follow. Okay. Uh, oh, we're just finding derivatives. All right, so h of x is f of x times g of x. So uh, h prime is going to be the product rule. So first, derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. Then we just have to plug one in everywhere. I'm not gonna make you watch me write that, but I do think you should show that step. It's much easier to backtrack if you've made a mistake when you show this step than it is if you just have a bunch of numbers. Um, now we go to the table and we just read them off. So uh, f of one is two, g prime is negative two, g of one is one, f prime is three. Um, so overall we get negative four plus three, so negative one. All right, for b, we are, well, jumping the gun there. For b, uh, h of x is f of g of x. The derivative of f of g of x, that's literally the chain rule, right? So h prime is gonna be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's our chain rule. Uh, we need to plug in two everywhere we see an x. I think you should show this step. I mean, I, I'm not, am I gonna make you? I might make you, I don't know. Uh, if you're in my class, if you're not in my class, there's nothing I can do, but I think I might make you like require, show all intermediate steps. Um, we'll see, but bank on it, because I probably will. Um, so g of two on the table is two, so really we're doing f prime of two, and then a g prime of two in the table is negative six. So I have a hard time reading this table for some reason. I think it's, uh, do the x's usually go across the top and the functions go vertically? I don't know. I had a lot of trouble reading this table. Um, and then f prime of two is five. So we're really doing five times negative six, which is negative 30. Um, and then uh, for part C, we're gonna do uh, the quotient rule. So h prime is going to be Bottom, through the top, requires the chain rule, f prime of x squared times 2x minus top f of x squared. Derivative of the bottom is just g prime all over the bottom, g of x squared. Now, everywhere you see an x, replace it with a one. So I'm gonna just show that step. So h prime of one is one f prime of one times two minus f of one times negative two. Oh, I guess I forgot to write g prime of one. Bad, my bad. Um, should have written that, but I didn't. Um, all over one. Now we go to the table, we find the values that we need. Uh, f prime of one is three, and f of one is two. So we have this. 
Um, so I think overall you get 10. If I screw that up, let me know in the comments because I didn't really check it over and sometimes I mess up table problems. All right, uh, for three, we wanna find the derivative with respect to x of arc 10 of 5x cubed. All right, so the derivative of arc 10 is one over one plus x squared. So I'm gonna do one over one plus the quantity 5x cubed um, squared times the derivative of 5x cubed. That's my game plan. So here goes. The derivative, do you need to watch that? Um, the derivative of arc 10 is something over one plus the quantity 5x cubed squared times the derivative of 5x cubed, which is 15x squared. So that's all the time. That's how I write those derivatives. Arc 10, uh, let's say arc sine, arc 10, and natural log. I usually like start off by writing the denominator and then I just put the derivative in the numerator because that's what happens every time. Um, and this, I mean, I guess you would simplify to 15x squared over one plus 25x to the sixth. Gotta be able to do the simplification at the end, but I, I think you can. Find the critical points of f of x equals uh, the quantity three x plus five to the eighth times the quantity two x minus seven to the fifth. All right, so product rule, but within the product rule, some chain rule. So here goes, this will take a while. Um, it's gonna be first, so three x plus five to the eighth times derivative of the second. So we got a five from the power rule and a two from the chain rule. That's where that 10 is coming from. Uh, and then two x minus seven to the fourth. Second derivative of the first, we have an eight from the power rule and a three from the chain rule. That's where 24 comes from. And then the quantity to the seventh. Now, what can you do? You can take out three x plus five to the seventh. You can take out two x minus seven to the fourth. You could also take out a two, but like, I don't think it's worth it. Um, but it's up to you. So I've done that. I'm not gonna make you watch that. I took out three x plus five to the seventh, two x minus seven to the fourth. Then I'm left with 10 times three x plus five, so 30 x plus 50, and 24 times two x minus seven, which gives me 48 x minus 168. Um, I'm gonna clean that up a little more because you really need to clean up that third set of parentheses to find the critical point. And then critical point, anywhere this derivative equals zero, so that's gonna be negative five thirds, seven halves, and 118 over 78. But 118 over 78 will simplify, so if you want to, you can, probably a good idea. Multiple choice, it would definitely be simplified. Anyway, uh, that's the entire thing. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.